If you're interested in why this reptile is called the two-headed lizard in some parts of Australia, stay tuned and I'll explain in this video. G'day, I'm Cara Marie. Thanks for joining me in the bush today. I'm in the southwest corner of Western Australia and I'm looking for a particularly fascinating and somewhat awkward lizard. This lizard is common across Australia, including Western Australia, South Australia, Victoria, New South Wales, the Australian Capital Territory and in Queensland. And it's such a well-known and well-liked animal that us Aussies seem to have given it a different name in most parts of Australia, such as the stumpy-tailed lizard, the shingleback, sleepy lizard, pine cone lizard, two-headed lizard, bobtail and boggy. Here in Western Australia it's known mostly as the bobtail or in Noongar language, yawn. Its scientific name is Taliqua rugosa. In this video though, I will refer to it mostly as the bobtail lizard. So bobtail lizards are large, lumpy skinks with blue tongues. If you've grown up in Australia, you're probably very familiar with the small little lizards, the little skinks that we get in our gardens, and believe it or not, bobtails are actually related to them. Bobtails are a lot larger though. In fact, they can grow up to 40 centimeters from the tip of their nose to the tip of their tail. And their movement is a lot slower and awkward compared to those smaller skinks that we're familiar with. They have a triangular shaped head and usually a short stumpy tail with large rugose scales. There's a good word, rugose. It means a rough or wrinkled or ridged surface. If you remember the scientific name Taliqua rugosa, the rugosa section is referring to the scales, the rough rugose scales. In fact, I really like the name pinecone lizard because it's a really good way of describing these scales. Here's a photo of a pinecone next to a photo of a bobtail. It's a pretty good likeness. Now, you may have heard that bobtail lizards are monogamous and that is pretty well true. They do find the same partner each year when it's time to mate. So most of the year actually they're pretty unsociable, they hang out on their own. Then each spring they will seek out their partner, hang about together for a little while, mate and then three to five months later the female gives birth to live young. Now the bobtail young can grow up to about 22 centimetres in length before they are born. Do you remember earlier I said that the adult bobtails can get up to 40 centimetres? That's a pretty big baby. It's about the equivalent of a human giving birth to a three-year-old. And not only that, they can also have twins. Most of the time they do have two and sometimes up to three or four. So when I've come across bobtails in the bush, generally what alerts me to their presence is a rustling in the leaf litter. So the moment I hear that, I actually stop still because you never know if it could be a snake or a bobtail. So if you hear rustling in the leaf litter in the bush, just stop and wait until you can identify what's making the sound. Because if it is a snake, you may want to turn around and walk in the opposite direction. If a bobtail feels threatened, it will generally turn towards that threat display its blue tongue and hiss in an attempt to frighten off a potential predator. Now they are not poisonous and they're pretty much not dangerous either. They do have jaws designed for crushing snail shells and beetles so if you did get bitten I reckon that would hurt quite a bit. So here are a few more interesting facts about bobtail lizards. They use their tongue to smell the air, much like snakes do. They can eat up to 30% of their body weight in one day. They are omnivorous and most of their diet is made up of plant matter, such as berries, stems, leaves. And they also eat fungi, insects and snails, as well as sometimes carrion, which is another word for decaying meat. They have the ability to store fat in their tail and this can be a good indicator of good or poor health. So a nice fat tail on a bobtail generally means they are in good health. And that brings me to the reason why in some parts of Australia, this lizard is known as the two-headed lizard. And that is because the tail 
and the head can look very much the same. Sometimes you need to look a lot closer to figure out which end is the head and this is probably a very good defense mechanism for the bobtail or two-headed lizard because it may confuse predators and perhaps give them a bit of time to run away as fast as they can which isn't very fast but if they're close to understory they can generally get under there quickly and get out of the way. Now speaking of predators, natural predators to bobtails can be falcons or eagles, large goannas, large snakes and introduced animals such as cats, dogs and foxes. Humans can also be a threat to bobtails. Sometimes bobtails are very slow at crossing the road and get run over by cars. Other times humans may inadvertently poison bobtails by putting snail bait out to kill the snails which the bobtail then eats. And other people sometimes unfortunately remove bobtails from the bushland to keep them as a pet or to sell them and this is incredibly unfortunate. Firstly this is their home, it's horrifying for the animal to be removed from its home. There is nothing to benefit for that animal. It reduces the biodiversity of the bushland because every part of our bushland is an important part and that bobtail may well have a partner that comes looking for it in spring and will never find it. So please respect these animals. This is their home. Let's leave them to live their life in peace. You can help out if you are a pet owner, you can keep your cat indoors, you can keep your dog on a lead while you're walking it. Thank you for your valuable time. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed creating it for you. Consider subscribing to my channel so you'll be among the first to see all of my new released videos and share this video with all of your mates who like reptiles. I'll see you soon on Life in the Bush.